right, friends. Well, we'll get started. Um, thanks for joining us. You're welcome to uh, mute your cameras or turn, or sorry, mute your mics and turn your cameras off as um, we get started, but please feel welcome to um, jump in on either at any time for questions. Um, Thank you for joining us. This is our second um, attempt at a webinar project learning series. Since we're no longer um, able to meet in person for the time being, we thought we'd um, offer to our Hennepin 4-H youth just some opportunities to think about ways to continue your project learning at home um, and just really think of ways, um, things you're passionate about and just really have now that we have the time and space to explore those, um, we're happy to give you those resources. So tonight we're um, specifically talking about animal science and livestock projects. And as I'm reviewing our poll results, um, if you haven't had a chance, feel free to um, jump in that. I'll close it quite um, right after this. It looks like the majority of us in the room are two to four years or brand new to 4-H. And luckily I am right in there with you too. I am just about um, year three on the job and I was not a 4-H'er myself. I grew up in Montana and had tons of friends who were in 4-H but I was a Girl Scout and a and a softballer so um, I somehow missed the 4-H train and now being staff um, I regret it every day. So I'm excited to, to help you um, on your journey in 4-H and especially in those um, animal science projects and it looks like Right now we have most interest in dog, horse, poultry, and I see one interest in llama. So I'm happy to tell you more about that, um, as well as other resources and access points you might need, um, especially in terms of animal science and livestock projects. It's awesome to be able to own and or have access to the animal. So we can absolutely give you those resources. All right. Um, so as we move forward, um, I'm Amy Clara. Sorry if I haven't introduced myself yet. I am a local extension educator based out of Hennepin County. Um, again, been three years on the job and this has been a, a really fun project area, animal science and livestock for me to get involved in and learn about. Um, I love being a part of the shows. I just so strongly believe in the growth and development that young people have when they're connected with animals. So this has been a really fun opportunity for me um, to be able to learn about and harness and just really engage with youth and their um, fuzzy, feathery friends. And I have a, um, asked two of our 4-H youth in other animal projects to join us too. Um, Edie and Lucia, um, would you two mind um, introducing yourself? Maybe just say your grade and the project area you're in with animals and maybe your favorite part. Edie, do you want to start us off? Yeah, hi, my name is Edie and I am in seventh grade going into eighth. And I do hennepin healers um with my dog albus and it's been super great so far cool thanks Edie. how about you lucia um hi i'm lucia and i am in the rabbit project i'm in 10th grade and um favorite part i don't know if i have a favorite part i like all of it oh good that's awesome great So um, just to recap too, this webinar series, we're hoping to have one weekly on Wednesdays around this time, really ultimately helping you um, during this time and beyond. I don't know if we necessarily need a pandemic to engage us in project learning, but it never hurts when we're home and have time. Um, just to really engage in that hands-on project learning and connect you with um, staff as well as other 4-Hers and families who may have similar questions, build that community, think about and envision um, yourselves of what what 4-H projects you want to dive into and envision just yourself maybe in a career like this um, or just, you know, lifelong hobbies and just really understand, hopefully we can um, be able to convey just the, the value of a showcasing event, whether it's like the state, um, the state fair, or the county dog show, or county horse show, um, rabbit, um, or rabbit shows. They're just really excellent events to be able to take your learning even farther and be able to share your learning um, to a greater audience. And of course, 4-H is deep and wide, so we are always here to answer your questions. 
Um, so 4-H again, this is a very, um, very important program in terms of youth development. We base ourselves in the experiential learning model. So in everything we do, we're focused in learning by doing where um, any project area you're in will teach you essential transferable skills to life. You'll problem solve, you'll make tough decisions, um, you'll work in groups, you'll resolve conflict, you'll learn to communicate um, and just respond to the needs of others. So we're all about the experience, sharing it, processing it with you and be able to generalize and apply those skills to future opportunities. Um, so 4-H projects, 4-H uh, project learning and animal science, these happen in a variety of ways. Many of you um, who are current 4-Hers or brand new, hopefully you've had a chance to um, meet one of our 4-H clubs that focus in animal science. Um, also a lot of your learning happens at home, especially with um, like a dog club keeping up with your dog obedience and other opportunities um, to keep them enriched. Um, a lot of that happens at home, especially when you have that live animal that you need to care for. Um, this photo I have here, this is from our day camp that we have with Minneapolis Parks and Rec. Um, it's called Urban Explorers and one of our highlights each summer is visiting um, the Waconia Llama Farm called Rick's, uh, sorry, Carlson's Lovable Llamas and um, he's a great resource um, for 4-H in the state, especially our region, um, all about the llama project. So that's been a fun like exploratory camp program where we can introduce youth not only to 4-H, but um, just the greater animal projects available too. And you gotta love that llama smile too. Um, so what exactly are animal science and livestock projects? This is an opportunity for you, um, the 4-H'er, to choose an animal that you love, are passionate about, or a subject about an animal, and just dive right into it. Whether it's how to raise an animal, raise a chick from a hatchling to, um, to an adult, how to best feed, you know, what's the best um, feed for my dog, how to care for my horse, how to train my um, rabbit or my chicken, and really how to show your animal. So when we go to those um, exhibit events or those county or state fair shows, um, how do you actually display your animal um, safely and properly too? And ultimately, as you grow in this project, we hope that these are opportunities opportunities for you to explore careers in. And um, let me make it very clear that any, all of these projects don't necessarily require the ownership or housing of the animal. We have lots of resources, experts, and families who can help connect you to these um, resources and to extend your 4 hers learning. Um, and just to highlight our 4-H clubs, we have the Hennepin Healers, who are our dog project. Our Hennepin Hoofbeats are our horse project. Our rabbit club is called the Hennepin Hoppers. And we have, um, previous years, we've had um, a poultry club called Perfect Poultry. I think right now they've merged with the Hennepin Hoppers just based on a lot of overlapping interest and um, having access possibly to both the animals. So I know Eliana and John, you have had a chance to explore the poultry project through our um, Hoppers Club. And other animals that are very much active in uh, Minnesota 4-H, though they may not necessarily exist as a club in Hennepin, we absolutely have resources and staff and volunteers who we can connect you with who have um, expertise in beef and dairy cattle projects in goat, in llama and sheep and swine. So let that be known too that all of these exist and you're more than welcome to explore these project areas and we can absolutely help you find those resources. And another fun thing, if um, livestock or those big animals aren't your thing and you're more interested in um, you know, researching what animal to adopt. Um, for example, when I first learned PowerPoint when I was in high school, um, I we had an assignment to do a persuasion PowerPoint. So I made a PowerPoint to present to my parents on why we should get a dog. We had never had pets growing up in my house. Um, so I think had I been a 4 H'er, I would have brought that PowerPoint and the dog that my parents, um, should say caved, um, caved for, um, I could have brought that to, to the fair um, and presented it as a project 
and been able to really share my learning and all the research I did of what it took to own a dog. So in these um, animal related projects is like exploring animals, the pet project, you can think about how you care for your dogs and cats at home or guinea pigs or gerbils or iguanas, whatever it might be, as well as veterinary science. So more of that, um, like the medical aspect of, of animal care. Um, okay, so Lucia and Edie, um, these next two slides are for you and Lucia, I have you up first if that's okay. So I thought it would be great for these families to hear from you um, and if you would be willing to answer some of these questions about how um, just your involvement in your animal project. And I think I have about six or seven questions for you. Why don't you pick four of them, at least four of them to answer. Um, Do you want to jump in, Lucia? Yeah. Cool. Uh, did I turn on my video? Uh, if you'd like to, that it would be great to see your face. Okay, I'm not sure how I haven't had a chance to test it out. Oh, that's okay. Oh, I see it's working. Sweet. I see your face. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I guess I'll start with the, the first two probably because those would probably be helpful for people. So, and they kind of go together, how I got involved in 4-H and why rabbits. Cool. Um, so I've always wanted a pet. I always wanted a pet since I was like two. Originally it was like a horse and then I realized we live in the city, you can't have a horse really. And, there's a, and then it kind of ended up a um, lot of different pets I wanted ended up at rabbit because um, they have the furry aspect still unlike you know fish or birds mm -hmm. but they're not as they don't take up as much space as a dog and I, then I kind of learned about the whole um, the livestock side of it and that people actually like have those different breeds of rabbit like those breeds of dogs and people show them and I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah. And I first got involved back when I was wanted to get my rabbit. Um, my mom had always kind of wanted me to put me in 4-H because I loved animals and she thought she I, that would be good for me. But we kind of had a hard time finding it. But then uh, we found a rabbit club. And yeah, uh, so that was, I can only think. Mm -hmm. three or four three years ago four years ago I don't know how long so, it's been. Mm -hmm. yeah um so. at the state fair uh Hennepin Hoppers has an agility demo they do because um agility you can't it's not an official show yet so we went to that and we kind of met some of the people in the club and then that was the year I joined so awesome. do you want to explain what rabbit agility is um it's it's, if any of you know what dog agility is like, it's basically that. You have jumps and tunnels and like a little A-frame and the rabbits will, you have, will wear a leash and a harness and go through the course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Super cute. Mm -hmm. And I know there's poultry agility too. That's kind of been bubbling up across the state. So that's been a fun, fun thing to grow in other animals, other animal projects. Um, what would you say to someone new getting started in Rabbit Project, Lucia? Um, like, what advice would I give them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, definitely do your research first and um, talk to other people who have uh, rabbits that you know. But, so, like, my rabbits are woolly breeds, and they are a lot more work than I originally thought, <laughs> and I've had problems with stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do your research and read. I still love them, but some days it's kind of a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Glad you stuck with them. Anything else you want to share? Um... Mm. Hmm. 
Not that, not that I can think of, really. Cool. cool. Thank you. No problem. All right, Edie. Thanks, Lucia. Edie, do you want to tell us a little bit about your experience in the dog project? I have about the same kind of questions, just about dogs instead of rabbits. Yeah. Um... Maybe do you want to start with how you first got involved and why you chose dog, the so, dog project? How I first got involved, involved in 4-H is um, I started homeschooling three years ago and I started having like quite a bit of time um, and that that was just such a big opportunity for me to like expand my learning um, in animals and art and stuff like that. Um, I chose I chose a dog because um, I for me getting a dog was more than just um, having like a companion. I really wanted to like have a relationship with my dog mm -hmm. um, and train him. Uh, I, how do I learn at home with my dog in 4-H club? Um, it's, um, hmm. Like, what would you say is the big difference that, um, in the learning at both places? It's pretty different. Um, I actually enjoy doing it at the club, um, a little bit better because um, when I do the club, then I come home and practice what I learned from the club instead of learning new things at home. So I know that I'm doing it right. Sure. What, kind of, when what I, do you learn at club? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, in the club, uh, we learn, you go from like simple dog training um, to, like, how to sit, stay, and, like, down to, like, um, obstacles and stuff like that, and it's a super good way to, like, bond with your dog, but it's also, like, a super great way to be in the community. I, uh, got a lot of friends in, um, Hennepin Healers with that, so it was super great. That's awesome. Um, if I could have learned, learned about any species, what would I want to learn about? Um, I love all animals. Um, I just don't live, um, in a place where I can have many animals. Um, but I love horses and I do like horseback riding lessons and stuff, but um, it's just about how much you want to put into them. Like, my family just didn't want to, like, have horses, but, like, people who live out in, like, places where I am, like, um, more in the city, can still totally have horses, just um, they won't live uh, like in your yard or anything, they go to a place. So that's why 4-H is super great is it's so many opportunities, even if you wouldn't think off the top of your head that it would be possible. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Edie. Um, and we actually do have um, a couple Hoofbeats members, and I wonder, um, Morgan or... Um, Elise, if you, either of you want to talk about your experience in Horse Project, I'm sorry, I don't have a slide for you, but um, maybe you could kind of piggyback off of like what Eva was saying, uh, or sorry, Edie was saying of, um, like, what is it like to have a horse in the city? Um, or maybe you don't, or maybe you lease. Here, I can go first, but um, Thanks. So are. I'm Elise. <laughs> hey, Elise. Hi, I have two horses, and we board them someplace, so we live in the city. 
and we how far away is it it's like four miles or something so it's really close but we still get to have them and do with them every day if we want but yeah cool what came first 4-h or horses i always like or and i ask that a lot of a lot of times to my animal project folks horses actually (laughs) cool and what made you decide to join 4-h then um, well, we were in another group, and that was, like, we worked at the Hamill Rodeo, and we, I got horses and wanted to see if I could do something with them, and we found our club, so. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for being willing to be put on the spot. I appreciate that. Yeah. Cool. Um, So just as we're moving forward, I want you all to think about since you may, since many of you in this group do have 4-H experience um, and maybe you already have your animal species or topic picked out, maybe there's a new one. I want you to think about now, like what level would you say you say you are at? Are you just starting out? Are you kind of in the middle and feel like you're learning more, like you have a good foundation, but there's still a lot you want to learn? Or have you just really done the research you feel advanced and now you're just like really expanding your horizons. So that might just start help help you find your your status to really think about like what's next for you. So um, the next step too is to connect back with us, your community, your club, and see what resources are out there. Sure, if you have an animal at home or are looking for um, to meet a new species of animal and to get experience with that, we can help you find that. And then the other piece I want to, I always like to challenge our animal science and livestock um, youth is how can, how can we connect this learning, what you're doing in animal science to further develop, develop your communication skills, not only just speaking with a judge, that's a very important piece, but how are you advocating for agriculture, for livestock, for animal science, for, you know, humane treatment of animals, you know, whatever, whatever topic you're passionate about, how are you communicating that? How are you learning about that? How are you positively impacting your community in, in the, in these experiences? And how can you lead into each other's? How can you, though many of you are kind of within this you know, five-year newish, um, newish setting, as you grow in this project area, how can you think um, of ways to lead and teach others and in, in what you're passionate about? So here are some things I want to um, at least point out. These, um, this sheet uh, I'm showing here is from Iowa 4-H, and um, they have a whole catalog of all the 4-H projects um, available, and they're called Hot Sheets. So these are a great resource um, that I will share with all of you at the end of this meeting. Um, And really, if you're brand new or looking for new ideas in your project to um, just step into, these these are a great resource. So say you're brand new in dogs. So see how I circled um, circled the starting out. Um, This is where you can start. Maybe you don't even have a dog. So here, the first bullet says, gather information and determine the best dog for your family. Is it from a breeder? Is it a rescue? Um, This is something that you, the 4-H'er, should and can take um, leadership in with your family. Make that PowerPoint like I did when I was 14. And maybe this is how you want to start communicating. Maybe you don't necessarily have a dog at home, but you want to start thinking about um, way like dog safety in your neighborhood. Um, maybe there's been an important experience you've had that you want to talk about. So making a poster um, or doing research of how to approach a dog safely, how to um, train your dog for exhibition if you do have one. So um, those are just like really important, um, just kind of intersections that I want you all to start thinking about with your project. So say like Lucia, it sounds like you're pretty advanced in your project learning. Maybe there are um, some more like veterinary type um, project learning you can go for with your breed. Um, What makes your breed of rabbit particularly challenging? And you can start um, doing research about that. I know another big piece in our rabbit project is actually market rabbit, so rabbits that are raised for meat. And um, maybe you can start thinking about how you can communicate and advocate for that type of meat source within within your community. Perhaps that's like a citizenship type of project of um, handing out like food samples. Maybe you have a rabbit that you have been able to prepare um, and can share, share that with others. 
for horse, say you're an intermediate, um, you can um, think about how the etiquette and um, riding safely. In 4-H, there is a um, very strict policy on wearing a helmet. So um, perhaps this is an opportunity for you to think about helmet safety and horse safety and be able to create a communication project about that. And then finally, for poultry project, um, here's a really fun, I mean, from chickens to ducks to geese to pigeons and doves, um, poultry is um, so, so, so many birds. So you can maybe explore some different classes and breeds of pigeons or classes and breeds of chickens and think about how, um, like the differences between egg layers. What's the best Minnesota chicken to have in your backyard for egg layers? Perhaps too, with so many different, um, I know for us in Hennepin County, with so many cities having so many different rules and regulations and policies about what we can and can't have in our backyards, this could be something you can take to um, like a leadership opportunity and engage with your neighborhood or your city council to think about what kind of education tools can you give out to, um, I think it was Brooklyn Park. Um, I know there's a city recently in Hennepin County that's just approved backyard chickens. So maybe you can get behind a new policy um, to help educate families of what that can mean for um, just your general like carbon footprint when you have your own eggs in your backyard and how that can um, just help help that. Um, there are tons of more resources to share and here are just a few. Um, we talked about the hot sheets. Our Hennepin County Premium Book is another very um, important resource to have as you're thinking about your showcasing. As you are doing your project learning, in the meantime, our 4-H mall, um, shop4h.org, is also a really fun website for you to find curricula and worksheets and project kits um, for purchase and just let me know and we can help. Um, we can order some for you and have it even just shipped right to your door. Um, myself, Catherine Wynn, and all of our club leaders in animal science and um, livestock projects are more than happy to answer your questions. We also have a statewide animal leasing program so if you were someone who is interested in a, a getting involved in a new species or just getting started in general in animal projects, there are um, agreements that um, and resources we can help you make and find to, um, to have an animal to care for that you may not own, but maybe it's a visit to a farm on a weekly basis and we will set that up for you. And also our youth leaders here on our on our panel today and beyond are, um, are great resources too because they have that first-hand experience right now in this project area. Okay, we are, it is already 7.30 and I'm very sorry that this has gone, we talked for so long. I would love to hear your questions um, and youth too, you're welcome to stay on and um, and maybe help us help us all answer.